and favourite celebrities. Oh. Just want to touch base. Paired up with an expert. Boom! So, what? <laughs> and a classic car. No hand! Their mission to scar Britain for antiques. My office. Now! The aim? To make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no easy ride. Oh. Who will find a hidden gem? Like that. Who will take the biggest oh. risk? This could end in disaster. Will anybody follow expert advice? But I love this. How would you buy something you're not going to use? There will be worthy winners and valiant losers. No, I don't want to shake hands. Put your pedal to the metal. Uh, let me get out of first gear. This is the Celebrity Antiques Road Trip. Yeah. Today, we'll be pootling around Edinburgh with two celebrities who are the best of friends. This is what life's all about, isn't it? It's just in the middle of nowhere, in a car, that's, that's smaller than my jumper. <laughs> Squeezed into this HMC Healy, a comedian Tim Vine, an actor and funny man Ricky Grover. Yeah, so I'm trying to find a gear I like, and that's, that's not... Right. I don't think that's one. Blimey, there we are. There you go. That's a, that's, I like. I think I'm choosing this depending on what note I'm getting from it. <laughs> <laughs> King of one-line comedy, Tim has a reputation as a fast fire pun slinger. Oh, it's a pansy. Well, it's a chimpanzee. Oh, that's not a good sign, is it? The funny man even held a Guinness World Record for telling 499 jokes in just 60 minutes. Wow. Serious now? Concentrate on the road. This is speed bump. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> That's my bum hitting the floor, isn't it? A one-time amateur boxing champion, not a lot of people know that, <laughs> Ricky has starred in some of Britain's best-loved programmes, such as EastEnders and the Porridge remake. He is hoping for an appropriate sparring partner, eh? What sort of antique expert are you after, Ricky? It'd be lovely if I got someone who spoke my own language, wouldn't it? <laughs> You're going to get the posh one. I'm going to get the posh one. You're going to get it too. You're going to be go mob handed into antique shops and threaten them into giving you bargains. There'll be no need for that. <laughs> Not when you've got two veteran antiqueurs on hand to help with the haggling. Behind the wheel of this 1969 Jaguar E-Type is James Braxton. Riding shotgun is David Harper in leather. It's a beautiful car, and you look beautiful too. You oh, look fantastic. Oh, David, I'm yeah. loving you. Steady on you two, mutual admiration. What about your celebrities, eh? So Tim Did... Vine. Yep. Do you know him? Oh, lovely man. I've seen him. Right. Very funny. He's Very funny man. Terribly funny. Lovely man. Tim is the man for me, Chief. I think he does suit you, and I like Ricky. I think he's an all-rounder. He's a sportsman, ex-sportsman, a boxer. Yeah. He's yeah. a comedian, a great actor, and I think he's oozing talent. So I'm happy to go with Ricky. That sounds like a decision to me. Once paired up, our teams will hit the road with £400 in their pockets. James and David are standing by on the shore of the Further Forth to go forth. So I get a bit perky when I'm near salt water. So is this you being perky then? Yeah. Oh. Look lively then, gents. Here they come. Isn't that a pretty car? We made it. I've right. never seen a space so constrained. <laughs> <laughs> Take time, Chaps. You two make a space look small, don't you? <laughs> God, I had to grease up to get in there. Yeah, I know. I know. It was yeah. hard work. Well, you're with me, Ricky. Come on, Tim. James. I saw you, I thought, oh, I hope it's him. Oh, not again. I can't, I can't Come on. keep doing this. <laughs> it's like getting in well, the luckily, submarine. I'm a yogic master, so I'm in. Oh, we'll leave these two standing, won't we? We're in the wrong car, haven't we? Need some aura. In your own time, Tim. Right, I'm just, I'm just trying to... be master of the handbrake. Yes, would you mind? I, I knew that was on. Uh, oh, there we are. Oh, there we are. I'm going to attempt second. Let's see where our pairs are headed, shall we? Starting off in Inverkeithing in beautiful Fife, they will meander their way around Edinburgh before heading 130 miles south across the border to auction in Wooler. The E-types are getting better acquainted. Form an awfully cue. I come from rag and bone people. Rag and bone? Hey, the, you, you then have been perfectly trained, if that's the case. Give me the story there. So, we had a horse in our hallway. Your hallway? In your house? In, in the house. What, you, what do you mean a real horse? A real horse called Ginger. What's Ginger doing in the hallway? See, if you're a rag and bone, you've got nothing to pull the cart. You've got to have an horse. Well, that's your car, isn't it? That's your car. But you know what? Can you imagine the sort of stuff that's gone through my hands as a rag and bone person? Well, that's interesting. So all the stuff you've seen, was there anything in particular that you were that you really loved? Any particular period or type of thing? 
Well, when you're from the East End, it's not so much about the story, it's, a, it's more about, is there a pound note in it? That's the spirit, Ricky. Meanwhile, Tim and James are having a little bit of difficulty with their HMC healing. It's a grinding noise, and I... Oh, dear. That is grinding. I'm trying to get it into second. I'm having a bit of trouble getting it into a gear. I'm going to try and get it in first. Yeah. I think we're reaching crisis point, isn't it? Like, oh, are we giving up on it? I think we're giving up on it. I mean, I mean it doesn't... I can't get it in gear. That's kind of... It's one of the things about driving, isn't it? It's quite fundamental, isn't it? I think it's all right to leave it here and just move on with our lives. I... That's the car gone, then. <laughs> Onwards and upwards. No, you do visual you... jokes as well, do you, Tim? I do some visual jokes, yeah. It's good, isn't yeah. it? So bloke said to me, he said, can you copy a cassette for me? I said, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Both teams this morning are heading for the same shop. Despite abandoning their car, Tim and James are first to arrive. James. Gail. James. Gail. Hi. Tim. Hi, How Tim. Are you? Well, we're looking for something that, uh, that you're selling at a price, but you don't realise it's worth more. Right, well, we'll try and find something <laughs> like that, I'm quite yeah. sure, upstairs. Yeah. Well, Tim catches on quick. The bargain centre has plenty to choose from. I wonder what will catch their eye. What's this? It looks like... Well, I what it is. Well, I think that was known as a telephone seat. Right. And so... When you were nattering to Aunt Hilda, you would sit in, sit in some comfort. Brilliant. I think I might try it, actually. I'm going to put, yeah. I'm going to put, my, put my phone down here and see what it says. That's, that's, sort of, that's sort of period phone, isn't it? <sighs> Hello, Mother. Hold the line. <laughs> oh, Lord, here come Ricky and David. Flash. Naughty, we've beat them. Brilliant. Want to get in there. Right, nice and fast. Uh, oh, excuse me. Just want to touch base. <laughs> oh. If I like something, I'll say sweet as a nut. OK, all right, sweet as a nut. Marvellous, this is great. Uh, oh. Hello. There's the rivals. Oh, the competition. My Lord. Well, how'd you get here? We've got a taxi. Well, we walked you. quicker than your car. Yeah. Well, we've had a nice drive in the countryside, though, haven't we? Yeah, we've we had a nice yeah. drive. I don't matter. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. We did, the odds are against us, but we're still going to come yeah. good. So, Ricky, this is not a sweet as a nut moment, is it? It's not really, no. no. Go on, Tim. I thought we was here first. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have to... OK, have to... well, what I would like to do, I think this is a bit sparse. I want to get in there, but let's go behind them. I know they've already been there, but I don't... I they don't want... know. Well, they don't know nothing, the bear of them, honestly. Good plan, David. Let's see what's on offer. Who does that remind you of? Oh, Ginger. Ginger! Sellotape, James. It's very cheap, that sanitary, but I think, you know, it's but, a mark-up. But what about the buffet? Can you name the wood, Tim? Um, I'm going to call it Cyril. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's called mahogany. Oh, okay. Cyril mahogany, obviously, yeah. 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 Cyril killer. Cyril. <laughs> Cyril killer, that's a, good, that's a good punchline for a joke. I'm going to, write, I'm going to te <laughs> text myself that. Cyril killer. We're getting a bit off track here, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, just, right, yeah, yeah just you'd better me. get moving, chaps. It looks like your opponents have already found something. Yeah, a Benares brass tea bell. Fifteen quid. Fifteen quid. OK. It's a bell. Yeah. Oh. How does it work? Yeah. How does it work? So it's got to be like... It's a oh, that's a good sound. I used to do a bit of chanting. I don't know if you... Genuinely. Gen this is not a wind-up. Can, can, can I ring the bell you chant? Nam yo ho ring ye ho, 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 nam yo ho ring ye ho. Bit out of breath, but well, it worked on me. Yeah. What age do you think that is? Do you know what? I don't think it's massive age. It feels machine made. I think like? you're absolutely bang on. Thanks. You can tell by the teeth there. Yeah. There's no wear at all. It's even been blacked up in places to make yeah. it look like it's built up kind of a patination. Yeah. But it's the kind of thing that Buddhists would have been using for centuries. The yeah. design hasn't changed. And we know, because we've used it, it works. See if we can get it for a cockle. A cockle? A cockle, yeah. Ask them if they'll do it for a cockle. I'll ask them for a cockle. Yeah. All right, OK. You know what, the cockle... I haven't got a clue, but I'll ask them. Cockle, Does... cockle and hen, ten. Cockle and... OK, well, OK, it's well, we're so in Scotland. chance of, yeah. I'm sure they'll understand East End. Yeah. Shall lovely. we try a cockle? Yeah, let's try it. All right. OK, okay lovely. Let's see if Gail can comprehend Ricky's Cockney rhyming slang. Fifteen pounds. Gail, would you be interested in taking a cockle for it? Yes, I think we could do that. Ten pounds, yes. How do you know it's ten pounds? 
Because Gail's clued up. <laughs> no, oh, that'd be lovely if you've done that for us, yeah, Gail. No I'm problem. over the moon with that. We'll be happy with that. Yeah. Marvellous. Oh, Gail, problem. thank you very much indeed. You're thank, welcome. Thank you. Thanks so You're much. You're welcome. Thank you. First purchase. Cheers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good start, but watch out. It looks like Tim and James are on your patch. Gail, do us a favour. Could you call them over and say you'd like to show them something? When we get them over here, we can slip over, back over there. Would you do that? I'll try. Tim. Hi there. I've got something over here I'd like to show you. Right, OK. I think your friends have just slipped over into the corner there. Oh, they've done the classic pincer oh, move. Oh, yeah. And you've Pinching. been part of it, girl. I, 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 Sorry. I can't <laughs> believe it. Good manoeuvring there, by the way. Yeah. Very good manoeuvring. You've got to use all the skills you've got in your armour. Very sneaky. It doesn't seem to have phased them, though. What's this? I think it's did you, Isn't it an Aussie thing? Is it? Didgeridoo. Yeah, didgeridoo, yeah. yeah. I thought this bloke playing a dancing queen on a didgeridoo. I thought, that's Aboriginal. <laughs> it's got a split there, but for 30 quid. Oh, we'd get that for 15. Go for the juggler. Let's go. You've got a joke about splits. Uh, yes. <laughs> I went down my local gym. I said, Mr Nasium, I said, um, I said, can you teach me how to do the splits? He said, how flexible are you? I said, I can't make Tuesdays. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, let's, have a look. Let's, well, let's hope Gail's got a sense of humour, eh? The didgeridoo is priced at £30, but just don't try and play it. Now, we, we have something here mm -hmm. which we like, but there is a... Uh, there's one thing about it. A caveat. A caveat, in that it really has a, a jolly nasty split in it. So what would you like to offer? Oh, ten, ten, £10. Ten pounds, ten. Yeah. Ten. I don't think he'll go that low, but I can certainly <laughs> phone and ask. Well, well, if you don't ask, you don't get. Hello, it's Gail. Hello. Oh, hiya. Right, um, I've got a gentleman looking at their didgeridoo, and he was wondering, you've got a price of £30? Yeah. Mention that. He was wondering... There's a big split in it. Big split. If you would do it for 10 what about 15? You go halfway. Oh, that sounds fair enough. We'll go with 15. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. That's their first buy of the trip. Time for Tim and James to hit the road. No. That's oh. their car. That's oh, their yeah. car. Go Come on. On. If only we had. What? Key. Oh, well, let's see. Might have the keys in there. Should we take it? Well, why not? Do you want to walk? No, no. It's no. a long way. Go for it. Come on. Ricky's not going to be pleased with this. He's going to love it. Don't you worry. It's open. An old country. There we are. You're away, well done, that man. Up there, turn left. Ow. Naughty. <laughs> Back in the shop, none the wiser Ricky's spotted something. My gosh. Do you know what it is? Is it like um, a fountain? You know, you press it down and the water comes out? Yeah, 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 it's exactly what it is. Brilliant. Initials there. I mean, when you see initials like that, you often think of a monarch. Yes. But that is not a monarch. It's not VR or GR. No. It is uh, CN. So it's CN. somebody's initials. Yeah. So um, it's probably not something that you might find in a, a, a park. Yeah. A public park. More like it's a private home. 55. I think we should offer him Bobby Moore. Let me just try and work that out. The Bobby Moore. Yeah. That's 20. See? Am I right? It's bang on, Bobby Moore score. Bobby Moore score. David's so catching on quickly. <laughs> Time to talk to Dealer George to see what can be done on the 19th century cast iron wall fountain. See this here, George. I don't want to rip you up the ribs too hard. But is there any chance you would take a Bobby Moore for this? Score? Score? Yeah. 100%. Exactly. You got it. Well, so it's a wee, wee, bit, a wee bit cheap. Okay. How about if we make it 25? How about if, how about if we do 22.50, meet in the middle? Is there any chance of that? I think we could maybe do that, right? Because it's been lying about in my garage for a long time now. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to have that for 22.50. I'm over the moon, but that gives me a bit of a chance. Maybe a chance. You should have yeah. a good chance for that. Yeah. You should have a good chance. You've been hit up the yeah. ribs, thank right, you. Yeah, thanks. Cheers, Jules. Thanks, thanks a lot. Yeah. And thanks again, Gal. Cheers. You're welcome. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Gal. Thanks. Marvellous. So polite. That's a total of £32.50 for the wall fountain and the Benares Bell. Nicely done, chaps. Where's the car then? Where did I park the car? Have you got the keys? No, I haven't got the keys. Hang on a minute. I know what's happened here. I know what's happened. Have you worked it out? They've taken it. 
Posh mobs took it. Yeah, nice. we've been mobbed, haven't we? Do you know what we've been done? We've Hit been up the ribs by the posh mob. Scandalous. <laughs> the least they could have done is to take it somewhere more scenic. Not very James Bond. What a car. Incredible. When what? I was growing up, this was my favourite type of car was the E-Type Jaguar. And I, this is my first time in an E-Type Jaguar, never mind driving one. This is like a childhood dream coming true right here. This is lovely. I do feel a bit guilty that we have essentially stolen their car. That's the only thing. I don't. Don't you? At all? No, no, no. See, I, no. I, know, I know Ricky... Why? Well, I know Ricky a little bit better than you. Yeah. And uh, he, he's, he boxes and, you know, he, he yeah. might... We're on dangerous ground. We are. On, I, you know, my suggestion is that at this stage we, we hand the money back and we just keep driving. <laughs> <laughs> Tim and James are heading to Tyne Castle Stadium, home to Heart of Midlothian Football Club. They have come to find out about the Hearts team of 1914 and how their actions at the outbreak of World War I inspired many to fight for their country. Chief Operating Officer Scott Gardner is here to tell them more about this defining time in the club's history. Incredible stadium to be in. Tell us about this amazing story that's central to this club. Well, the 1914 uh, Heart of Midlothian football team was widely recognised as being one of the greatest teams that the club had had at that date uh, and were leading the league uh, in Scotland uh, when uh, the Great War uh, broke out. Professional football, which continued throughout the war years, was the subject of intense public scrutiny. In November 1914, a damning letter appeared in the press, labelling the club the White Feathers of Midlothian. This accusation of cowardice spurred the players into action. The players had a meeting uh, without the manager being there and said, we must not take this and we must show that we're as brave as everyone else and signed up en masse. Feeling the call of duty, the players gave up their lead and the league, and this action proved inspirational. Supporters uh, of Hearts, as I say, they were a very successful team at the time, signed up because they wanted to be in the same battalion mm. uh, as their, as their uh, heroes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Most of them signed up for the 16th uh, Royal Scots. Within a week, the 16th Royal Scots had enlisted 1,350 men, amongst them 16 Hearts players and 500 of the team's supporters. You would find it difficult to imagine a football team en masse in, in the modern age saying we're all, off, we're all off to sign up and we're going straight to the front line. Local author Tom Purdy has written about the team's transition from footballers to soldiers. So what sort of training were they doing at the same time as, as training for the football matches? Then? Head off into the hills, into the Pentland Hills on night manoeuvres. Right. Come back from the night manoeuvres, six o'clock, seven o'clock in the morning. A right. uh, few hours rest, jump on a train. I have to go to Glasgow. And play football? Or Aberdeen to play football, yes. Okay. They end up with blisters right, okay. on their feet. And uh, as a result, their trainer, Jamie, Jamie Duckworth, he went along with them on the night manoeuvres to bandage up their, their injuries. Training complete, the players and fans joined the front line in January 1916, but no amount of training could have prepared them for what was to come. Over the course of the war, around 1,000 men from the 16th Battalion, including many Hearts players, lost their lives. So was this being relayed to the fans? Were they aware of what was happening to their players? Yes, what eventually filtered back, as we very well know, there was a Forum 108B, which always began with... I regret to inform you. Yeah. So the, the area here, around about Tyne Castle, the Gorga area, this is where the main uh, body of enlistment came from. Yeah. So the postman was not a welcome sight no, no. on your street. There was something I was reading on the wall over there, in actual fact, and I'll see if I can remember what it says. On the 9th of April, 1922, the Secretary of State for Scotland um, unveiled the uh, War Memorial. Sir Robert Munro. He said, they did not he hesitate to serve their country in the early days of the Great War, and their example was contagious. I think that's what makes the, the, the club uh, so, so revered the world over, mm. because of their actions. Mm. And, um, you know, and we won't forget them. They were just ordinary men mm. from ordinary Boys. homes. Boys. Ordinary streets, yes, mm. yeah. Uh, they never, we had a life, we've had a life. Mm. They had mm. no, no. Mm. A memorial garden was built to remember and celebrate these men who, in showing such bravery, became legends of both the club and the game. 
Meanwhile, Ricky and David are on their way to the town of South Queensferry. It sits between the two iconic bridges on the Firth of Forth. How did they get the keys? Well, I left the keys in. Oh, I'm thinking Braxton might have slipped up and dipped your pocket. Could be you've actually left, left them in the motor. I left them in, yeah. i tell you what, I feel shorter. I feel like I've been on a sponsored walk. <laughs> Not far to go now, chaps. Sea Kissed sells all manner of maritime antiques. Sometimes you put the cream in the window, don't all you? Right, so yeah. so it's worth just having a quick look. Okay. What do you say about that duck? I actually like the duck. I yeah. like the duck. Why do you like the duck? I don't know. I'm drawn to it. Yeah. And I never thought I'd get drawn to a duck. No, I never did. And that's the first duck I've been drawn to. And then you're going to put it in pancakes and yeah, roll it up. Exactly. But that's, that's a proper duck. Time to talk to shop owner Jenny. Hello, Jenny. We've met before, David Harper. We Harcroft. have, yes. Nice, nice to, to see you. you. Yeah. Lovely to meet you, Jenny. I'm Ricky. Good to meet you. So, is there any chance of having a look at the duck? I'm going to bring it out head first. OK. OK. All right. Does it come okay. to? Oh, maybe not. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, oh. 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 Jenny, he's okay. a beauty. <laughs> that's half. Isn't he gorgeous? <laughs> I don't think he's from round these parts, and that's that's some of his excess oh, shells. Oh, okay. I see. I see. Okay. a little wet bit of extra duck. Shell work was extremely popular with sailors in the Victorian era. Most shell art was produced by amateurs, but this ambitious three-dimensional duck design is a handsome example and could have been made by anyone. I'm going to tell you the truth. He's freaking me out, that duck. He feels is like he's always staring at you. That's because the ticket price is £60. Quackers. Anything else catch Ricky's eye? What we've got is a pair of Sheffield, I would say. Yeah. Pewter. Yeah. 19, 10, 20 candlesticks. Yeah. So this has been nipped together and you've lost a little bit off yours. And also, you can tell they're handmade because, see, his arm is much it's further over his exactly, face than that exactly, one. It's so it's better. not a machine, it's not a machine job. It's better, isn't it? You know, I'm picking this game up good, aren't I? You're good. You've got a good eye, I've got to tell you. Thanks, you mate. My only issue with it is obviously the damage, because I know anything yeah. like this damage is, is very, massive. Very easily damaged, yeah. Yeah. You're not wrong, Ricky. That's the pewter candlesticks and the duck on hold. What's next? I want to take you back to the Orient. I like that. I, I, like, I like that. that. I'm always in love with these things. Like Do you know that. what it is? Is it a tea caddy? No, not a tea caddy. David? It's called a koro because it's Japanese. OK. If it was Chinese, it would be called a sensor. So what you do, you drop in burning incense, yeah. keep the lid off, and then out would pour clouds of smoke representing the long-gone dead souls of your ancestors. Listen, I'm into, into it, but where's all the dead people coming it's from? It's nice. It's not... No, it's not bad. OK. It's, it's, it's celebrating those that created you. So it's, it's a very spiritual experience yes. we're speaking. That don't say cockle, does it? It doesn't say That's... cockle. Jenny, do you fancy a cockle, Jenny? I think we'd have to have another half one on that. OK. Yeah. Cockle and a half for that. Right. So it's 15 quid. One possible. Still tempted, though, aren't you? Moving on, though, what else? To give us a proper chance. So, so that would make that a bullseye, bullseye. and that a cockle. <laughs> it's like so a foreign that's, language. Um, <laughs> that's a bullseye and a cockle. Yes, yeah, 60, 60. 60. Yeah. Now, time for the calculations, Jenny. I think they're offering you £40 for the duck, £10 for the candlesticks, and £10 for the Japanese koro, coming to a total of £60. 70 would be better. And that's, that, that's, that's good. The duck's looking at me. I know I can't leave yeah. the duck. I know you can't leave the duck. Can we meet halfway at 65? Yeah. Oh, yeah, why oh not? thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> I don't want to put my glasses on. I've got so excited. <laughs> thank you, Jenny. Let's have a thank little spiritual cuddle. Oh. Thank you so much, Jenny. That's a deal, then. £40 for the shell-decorated duck, 10 for the pewter candlesticks, and 15 for the coro. I mean, look at this. Oh, it's a good duck. It's a good duck. I'm proud of you, yeah. David. Mm, ducky. That's it for today, 98. A new morning and a new car. A red TR6 replaces yesterday's broken HMC Healy, but I've got a funny feeling all is not well. It was James's idea to steal the E-Type. Ricky. It wasn't my idea, it was just... I've never stolen anything in my life. I'm not proud of it. Ricky. 
don't be like this, Ricky. It was, it, it, it's, you know. Tim, I've known you for over 20 years, right? Yeah. Mm. You've never, ever put a foot out of place. Oh, there you go. You've been with this Braxton geezer five minutes, right? You're nicking cars. What's going on? Well, I... Off your own, mate. <laughs> I know. I just... Well, when you put it like that, it's, a, it's, it's surprising. It's really a right. diabolical liberty, Tim. Yeah, diabolical. <laughs> what do our experts have to say? You stole our car. You hey, stole it. It was raining. Yeah, well, you need to apologise well, to Ricky. When I see Ricky, it's going to be hands up. Yeah, yeah, well, good up. luck. Good luck hands with up. that, James. Yeah. Hands up. <laughs> Couple of soft jabs. <laughs> good luck with that, James. He's quite upset, you. For the start, you made out the other motor broke down. The other motor did break down because of the fact that the, the gear stopped working. That's why we got this new car. Look, the TB, uh, TB uh, to be confirmed or whatever it's called. Yeah. It? TR6. <laughs> Yesterday, Ricky and David bought like wildfire. They have the Benares tea bell, the iron wall mounted fountain, the pewter candlesticks, the Japanese Kuro, and the shell decorated duck. It's freaking me out, that duck. Leaving them with £302.50 to spend today. Tim and James bought one item, the Australian didgeridoo, <laughs> leaving them with a huge sum of £385 to play with today. Right then, chaps, time for everyone to catch up and be friends. You keep doing that, yeah, but you're going to get one up the ribs. And <laughs> <laughs> to keep them up. Oh, it's a TR6 a bit pimped up. Hey, look at that. It's, it's a pimped up it? TR6. Oh, Ricky, oh, Ricky, how are you feeling? <laughs> Should I hit him now? I well, he's, 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 well, he's down. Well, he's, get him, James. Well, he's down. <laughs> Did you hear me? How are you, mate? Very good, how are you? Yeah. Up the ribs, Ricky, up the ribs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting in the submarine. Yeah, I'm in. That's a bit like strapping into a uh, parachute. See you, boys. <laughs> While Tim and Jane sort themselves out, Ricky and David have a head start. Both teams are heading to the Leith area of Edinburgh. Out of all the roles I've done, and I've sort of won some awards for stuff and that, when you're from the East End, to be in East Enders, yeah. you've cracked it. Yeah. It's like all my family, they're not interested in anything else I've done. No. You know, forget all the other things that are a bit eyebrow and a bit different. EastEnders, Andrew Carr, and they're all like, oh, he's cracked it. He's done it. You've seen Ricky? You've seen him on there? Yeah. Oh, Andrew Carr, and he's one of your own. That's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be good on EastEnders with that jacket. Yeah, that's all I need. I'll tell you what, Davey, look, Davey. 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 Yeah. Davey. Yeah. Davey. I get up in the car lot. Davey Harper. Yeah. <laughs> Davey Harper. I think not. Let's check in with Tim and James. We bought one thing, haven't we, James? Yeah, we're doing well. We've only got. Oh, but are we though? We, we, now we're on our own. We can, you can talk yeah. to me honestly. Okay. I mean, I, I think it's, we've it's... got to spend up, Chief. We need to spend serious money to make serious money. Right. Sounds like a plan. Both teams are heading to Edinburgh Antique Centre, and true to form, Tim and James have arrived first. I can tell this is the location this is, where we win. This is the magic. This Just give magic. me two hours to get this safety belt off, <laughs> and I'll meet you in there round about dinner time. Come on, get a move on. There's plenty to see, and you've only bought one item so far. Anything that catches your eye. So there's lots okay, of silver, I'm lots of glass. I'm looking at something that from here looks like a small set of bellows yeah. and a tripod. What is it? Looks like a lemon press to me. Most likely Edwardian. We could certainly try and squeeze it in. Oh, Tim! It, does it work? You know, you should be able to sort of take that out for easy cleaning, shouldn't you? Oh, here we are. Look, it's functional. So you take that out, you clean it. So it is work. It's not yeah. faux. Nice tight fit there. Works, doesn't it? I think this could be the moment we buy something quite quickly. Let's hope so. The lemon press is priced at £75. Campbell is on hand to help. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. We like it a lot. What would you say is a twenty-five pound? <laughs> oh, I would say that probably is a little low. Is it? Maybe so you can knock it up slightly. What would you knock it up to? <laughs> Forty-five. I think touch hands. What? What? Mm. Round forty. Forty pounds on a deal. Forty pounds is a deal. 
Super. No problem. Excellent. Well, well, well done. We squeezed, we squeezed that out of him, yeah. didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I hope you're not bitter about that. <laughs> <laughs> that was quick. Look who's just arrived. This is ridiculous. Do you know what? I hope they left their keys in, cos I'm taking them up. Let's have a look. Keys are in. Oh, keys are out. I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> What's that? <gasps> it's James Braxton's. Get it on. It's a lovely bit of carving. Yeah. Always when buying something, always measure the weight. Oh, hello. Hi. How are you, boys? Always measure. Oh, hello. Well, Hi, team. Did, oh, hang on. Oh, what do you... Uh, these aren't yours to give. <laughs> we saw them, we stole them, we regretted it. Right. We thought, it, we, we're too good for that kind we of thing. We are too yeah. good, yeah. Where did you get that? Uh, yeah. I got this in the East End. Yeah. Didn't yeah. have him down as a cravat, man. No, yeah. I was once skiing through Ty, Ty Rack and uh, fell down an 80-foot cravat. That's one of my jokes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you're on Antiques Road Trip. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, exactly. That's exactly yeah. why. Yeah. Now, now, boys, this shop's big enough for the both of you. I can't believe it. Look at this. What'll catch the late comer's attention? Whoa. Hold tight. Oriental. That's a bit of me, isn't it? It's a bit of you. I think it's a marriage thing. I think it's celebrating a marriage. Is that something you'd wear? No, I don't think you'd wear it. I think it's been made to hang. What are you saying? That's too tight for me. <laughs> we could wrap that round you, Ricky. Dead <laughs> easy. Get round me, yeah. Is it on the back as well? Oh, look at that. It's painted on the back. Oh, oh. look at that. That is proper. That's, That's hand painted it, silk. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's well and truly degraded over. At least a hundred years. But that's at least a hundred years old. That's a bit of cream, though, isn't it? I like it. Ceremonial drapes, decorated with auspicious symbols, have been part of Chinese culture for millennia. Elsewhere in the shop, Tim and James have found yes. something they like. Who does that remind you of? <laughs> Ricky. Ricky. <laughs> Campbell, there's yes. all sorts of stuff in here. We love, love it. We'll give you a hundred pound for the lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, <laughs> what's that there? That thing there. There are of magnification goggles. They give the wearer an enlarged view. I'll get it out. The ticket price is £40. I'll do my James impression while you're doing that. <laughs> Hello. Um, I, I wonder whether you could play ta <laughs> table tennis. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but I'm buying that if you know what else is. <laughs> that's fantastic. Look at that. You look like a, uh, you look like a yeah. bottlenose dolphin that's just come out of the opticians. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, many eyes have found <laughs> Can I try it on, please? And it comes with a box as well, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's a box as well. Many hours of fun. Yeah. <laughs> I think you, you've all I, created a new species. I think I need to change my prescription, Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Campbell. Yes. No need to come forward like that. Step back, please. <laughs> um, um, uh, how do you feel about um, how do you feel about twenty-five? Oh, <laughs> a little bit low, a little bit low. Yeah. Um, how about 30? That's close, but then everything's close when you're wearing these. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think... Um, 30, did you say? 30, yeah. <laughs> For some reason, this is affected my hearing. <laughs> I think we gave a third, I think it's very funny. <laughs> Where are you? What am I shaking? <laughs> Put yourselves together. Let's see if Ricky and David are having as much fun. And so... <laughs> what are you looking at? Here, here it is. <laughs> oh you see what I'm saying? Gosh. This is a cast of a gorilla skull. Interestingly, casts of ape skulls have been key to anthropology research for centuries. David, ah! Open wide. Ooh. It's not a real one. No, which, you, which I wouldn't want a real no. one. No. Who does this look like? That's amazing. That's amazing. Oh, James, how are you? Especially with the cravat. <laughs> <laughs> it's James Braxton. Don't him here. Don't him here. I like this. I like that. Thing is, I, I can't tell you anything about this, because it, oh, all I know, it's a model of a gorilla skull. But we, what, what is it that you're drawn to? Well, there's just something about it. And my old nan, she used to say I was like a silverback. Yeah. You know, she did when I, when I was young, because I was always very strong. Yeah. And she'd say, look at him, he's like a silverback. <laughs> and that's what drew me to it. And I thought, you know what? Let's give it a go. Right. Well, so you can't argue point. with that, can you? Right. So we'll... The cast of the Gorilla Skull is priced at £295. Time to take a seat with dealer Drew to see what can be done. So, Drew, 
We're in a bit of trouble, aren't we? Oh, we're in a little yeah. bit of stuck. Yeah. I like this. I really want this. Okay. But I've also seen out there hanging on the wall a bit of Chinese thing going on. I don't know whether it's a bit of clothing or what it is. What was the Chinese thing up for? It was up for 500. I say it's up for a monkey. This is all I've got left in the world, Drew. I've got £2.50 there. Uh -huh. We don't need to mention that, Drew. All right. That's you. Anybody. That's, that's, yeah. for, that's for you, right? That there, my friend, is 300 quid. It's a carpet. It's a carpet. In Reddy's now, is there any way you could help us out and give us a chance at this auction? I think we can make the carpet magic and make oh, it work for you. Make it's the a deal. carpet magic? Yeah. Good Drew. magic moment. Drew. Do you know what? You've blown everything. I'm welling up. <laughs> I'm welling up, mate. He's going to cry. That's the cast of the Gorilla Skull for £102.50 and £200 for the Chinese silk drape, making the drape Ricky's biggest spend of the trip. That's, chaps, your lot. Who's driving? You. Let's check in now with Tim and James. Oh, oh. Hey, what have we got here? Well, this is uh, some sort of coronation coach. Quite heavy, that, isn't it? Mm. Now, that's the Queen's coach, isn't it? That's that special yes, coach. Yes, exactly. Yeah. She's in there. Is she? Oh, there she is. The Queen once came up to me and she went, God save our gracious Queen. I said, you've changed the tune. <laughs> <laughs> ah. So you just push that in. It's got all its chains, isn't it? And that just threads and that goes, hooks onto that hook there. Produce en masse, commemorative coaches like these have little rarity. However, the original box and overall good condition should go a long way towards tempting collectors at the auction. Priced at £100, let's see if they can do a deal with Campbell. We are interested in this item, the, the coronation coach. When was that? 1952, was it? No, we're interested in it now, aren't we? <laughs> um, yeah. Actually, the coronation was in 1953, James. I'd give you £30 for that. More like 70 I, I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say £45. 65 £46. <laughs> <laughs> no, £50? I think we'll have a deal at £50. OK, wonderful. Thank wonderful. you, Fantastic. Excellent. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. All in, that's £120 for a bumper haul of three items. Done. Campbell, Thank it's been a delight. Really, Thank you so much. Really Thank fabulous. you. Thank you, Arch, indeed. Meanwhile, Ricky and David are meandering their way through Leith. Once upon a time, Leith was known for its port. Today, it's the area's association with pugilism. It's going to get these boys excited. Ricky, because you've been a great travel companion, yes. I've got a super surprise for you. Brilliant. I'm going to take you somewhere very special. We're going to go and visit the oldest amateur boxing club in Scotland. Ah, oh, that's brilliant. Over the years, the Leith Victoria Amateur Athletics Club has trained many triumphant fighters. The club was created in hard times by even harder men, and against the odds, still survives to this day. Now, this is your world now, Ricky. Over to you, this one. This Over. looks like okay. a proper boxing gym. I'm liking it already. Here to tell the lads more about the club's history is current club secretary, Douglas Fraser, a member himself for over 60 years. Oh, I love it, Dougie. It's proper old school. How long have you been going? We've been going uh, as a boxing club since 1919. We're Scotland's oldest boxing club. So you're talking about nearly 100 years ago when it was a tough place, right? The area of Leith was a very, very deprived area. The kids that, that, that used to play in the street, this was, the, the Leith Victoria was one of the clubs that they could go to to get away off, off the street and, you know, behave themselves. So, so, and we had many, many kids that used to come in here that was bad kids from schools and, you know, used to be in trouble and we turned them into improper men. End of the Great War left Leith with high rates of crime and unemployment, and shipbuilding presented one of the few employment opportunities. So who was it that got this club off the ground? It was basically one shipbuilder by the name of Tansy Lee, who at the time was a professional boxer. He was, he was also the, the first man to win a Lonsdale belt outright. 
And although we are still known as Amateur Athletic Club, he started the actual boxing section. Under the stewardship of Tansy Lee, who was also an experienced coach, boxing quickly became the focus. He brought in two other coaches, Curly Patterson and Nasha Ness. <laughs> Nasha Ness, Tansy Lee. I mean, what else could you be other than a fighter with a name like yeah, that? Yeah, Did yeah. you have a name, Ricky, when you were fighting? My, my, my boxing name was Ricky Goodnight Grover. <laughs> Why, oh, the good, good, why, why the good night? Well, what I used to do, I used to cue them up, and as I see them wobble a little bit, I used to go, crack, good night. <laughs> you know, <laughs> did always work. Yeah, but... yeah. Tansy's most successful protege was Johnny Hill. Born in Leith in 1905, Johnny was only 19 years old when he exploded onto the boxing scene. In 1928, he went to Clapton Orient's football ground, boxed an American called Newsboy Brown, oh. and after 15 rounds, he, he won on points and brought the title back to, yeah. to Scotland. That victory meant that Johnny Hill became Scotland's first world champion. The success stories continue to this day, with the club boasting two world champions, three Olympic medalists and five Commonwealth Games winners. Despite its success, the club has remained true to its roots and to this day still strives to serve the local community. In 1919, our constitution was written up and it's still the same one today. From day one, if you have a boy or girl coming through the door that doesn't have any money, we will still take them through the door. That's brilliant. And funny enough, I have not got a shilling left, right? <laughs> That's true. But I'm here, and I'm going to show my Davey, I've promised him, yeah. I'm going to show him how to put a little combo together, yeah. a, li a little spike for one up the ribs. You know yeah. what I'm talking about, Yeah, Davey. definitely, yeah. Is that all right, mate? Can I do a bit? Well, let's go, guys. We'll get you ready. Oh, I'm ready. Ricky. The shot I've been talking about, yeah. eat them up the ribs, yeah. right? So that was a metaphor. Now I'm going to show you how to do it. All right, do it. A little bit square on, okay. Davey. A little bit square on. That's nice. Show yeah. me your shoulder. I'll get you some gloves. I don't, I don't need gloves. <laughs> oh. yeah, that, that was it. Right. <laughs> Back to the job in hand. There's antiques to buy. Let's catch up with Tim and James, who are heading to nearby Newington. Did you have to be funny to get to, to have a voice within the family dynamic? Oh, in the family? Well, I'm a middle child, so, you know, oh, the see. middle child's always yeah. sort of... Seeking circling, connection. Yeah, exactly, yeah. When did they winkle you out of the house, then? Well, I was shoehorned <laughs> out in the... Uh, in, 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 uh, it was the middle of last year. <laughs> well, my uh, mum would like me to take the washing round. To, to, I draw the line at that. I say, yeah. I say look, mum, you know... Yeah. Could you pick I it up? Stop bringing... <laughs> <laughs> no, not you as well, James. Their next port of call is Alan and K.L. Jackson Antiques and Curios. Shopkeeper Ricky is on hand to help. James. I'm Ricky. Ricky! Nice to meet you. Ricky. Ricky. Just got a job in a bowling alley. It's a temping. That's not a permanent job. <laughs> I didn't tell you that I've recently got a job as a spout for a teapot. <laughs> yeah, I'm the poorer for it. <laughs> it's just drip feeding. What about paintings? Is there anything that your eye is drawn to? It's not a fox, is it, that one? It is a fox. How much have you got on that picture? £70. Pounds. <laughs> Where's the fox in the right-hand corner? No, it's the name of the artist. Oh, I see, I've been looking for a fox. Sorry, it's oh, fox. Right, sorry, right. But it's also got foxy, which is damp on the thing. Yeah. Do you like it, or does it leave you cold? Well, it's... Uh, I wouldn't say it leaves me cold. It, it leaves me old. It leaves me old. OK. How about cold? So, oh. That's quite nice. That's a nice chair. It's a lovely chair. It's priced... What? How expensively. Much? How much? 
1,740 pounds. No, 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 no. That's circa 1740. Oh, is it? George II. That's <laughs> a genuine mistake. Yeah. A genuine antique from the 18th century. The ticket price is 240 pound. Folding. So George II was about 1727 to about 1760. <laughs> Two forty, Ricky. One fifty, we buy it. That's already ninety pounds off. I tell you what, it's got a nice wide seat. People used to have larger bottoms years ago. The other day, someone said, "Can I have three chairs for my patio?" I said, "Well, what's so good about it?" <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but for that reason, I feel like this. I'd like. I'd quite like this chair, but I do feel as though. And, you, and don't get me wrong, the hundred was. I, I feel as though <laughs> a hundred's a teeny bit overpriced because when you it was brought 150. it, one hundred and fifty. Well, it was one hundred and fifty, was yeah, it? Yes. That's not I... so bad, weird. Really. <laughs> 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 Do you remember the total we paid at the last place we went? Yes, I do. But we can certainly put it to him. I think we should put it to him. I think one hundred and twenty pounds might be well a handshake out of it. And you've got a deal. One hundred and twenty pounds. We hand you the hard cash. One hundred and thirty. It gives me a small profit. There you go. Let's shake the man's hand at one hundred and thirty. Come on, let's do it. Should we, should we do? I that? think we do. He's, I think, I think he's extend the been, hand of friendship. I think we should do. Extend <laughs> the hand. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Oh, Thank you. Oh, well on, Ricky. That's the mahogany chair bought for one hundred and thirty pounds. A big purchase, but let's hope it pays off. So that's the shopping complete for this trip. Now let's see if we can guess what one another have bought, shall we? See that thing over there shaped like a chair? Yeah. I can't tell you what that is. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think it is, Ricky? Shall we reveal? Yeah, go on, you do it. Right, you go yeah. first. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh. There we oh, are. We I'm are. feeling better now. You're feeling great. It's I'm awesome. feeling better now. <laughs> <laughs> That's say a uh, uh, Nepalese tent pole. No, what is it again? <laughs> didgeridoo. Didgeridoo. Yeah. didgeridoo. That's not even a didgeridoo. That's look more like a baseball bat, isn't it? <laughs> well, we didn't that, clarify that. That's that, like but, a uh, Babe Ruth. Isn't <laughs> 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 it? You can put a flame in it as well, and it doubles up as, a, as, a, as one of those Olympic <laughs> torch things. Like so it was, it's got it's multi-purpose. So there we are. There's yeah. that. It's um, lovely. We've got this, which is this is very exciting. It's, it's actually a lemon squeezer oh, for right. a sort of Victorian. Is it Victorian? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Victorian lemon squeezer. <laughs> that's uh, the, that's the Queen's. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Victorian, and this yeah. is something that's used by uh, yeah. people for um, uh, when they want to see something really close. <laughs> <laughs> How do I look? Yeah. Stay over there and say that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, very, very interesting. And we've got a chair. But we want to know what, what stuff is, is, is on the losing table. Are you going to play Zen, Tim? Thanks, Right, oh, good oh, idea. Dear. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> right, Ricky. <okay. laughs> wow. There we are. There you go. There Knock are. yourselves what out. In heaven's name. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's this here? What's that? We loved that, Ricky, didn't we? Oh, we loved that. Yeah, it's a shell duck. Shell duck? It's a shell that? duck, yeah. Have you never, duck. never seen a shell duck before? No. No. <laughs> I wonder why. What yeah. is it's, it's, it's a pottery model of a gorilla skull. It's not an actual skull? No, no. But yeah, you see, that totally. is an actual lemon squeezer. It's not a model of one. Ah, <laughs> <okay. laughs> And what's that thing there? It's, it's like a, a, it's a fountain. Yes, yeah, it's a yeah, fountain. Lovely, isn't it? I like that. Actually. Nice. Yeah. And I've got a big Chinese thing that you yeah. hang on the wall because it's very delicate because it's worth a lot of money. Yeah. We're about to go. That's got to go straight to the auctions. They got an incense burner as well. Yeah, we've got an incense burner. Oh, we've got the lot. We're yeah, very incense. well yeah. done. Very well, I think we should meet at the auction then. Yeah. Shall we? We'll see yeah, you there. Yeah. Game on. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Come on now. Time to spill the beans. I think we're going to absolutely massacre them. I can't believe what they bought. That's the sort of thing I would buy, is that duck. Would but, you? Well, yeah, but, I mean, there's not a lot of people are like me with the taste of the rubbish that I want to buy. I mean... <laughs> that chair is unbelievable, isn't it? Tim, I mean, he's posh, he's stayed on at school and everything, yeah. but I think we've got this one. I feel confident. Oh, OK, okay you know, great. After okay. the auction, we can rephrase, can't we? Yeah, well, we can, well, you can carry on doing the job you're doing and I can realise it's not my strength. <laughs> <laughs> After starting out in Inverkeithing, our celebrities and experts have travelled south across the border for an auction in Wooler. Your butt was going, innit? Tell the truth. Well, I have a slight fever about the chair. I, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> If your bottle is going, if you want me to try and help you out, cos I feel a bit embarrassed for you, I'll it's... give you the shell duck. My bottle is perfectly in intact, thank you very much. We may not make a lot of money, we may even lose money, but I think we'll do a little bit better than you. 
<laughs> Confidence all round them. Now, do I hear the, the limping sound of an exhaust? I can yeah. hear a Triumph TR6. There I can see go. it. Look at that. Oh. No, no. We're a pair of thumping studs. Don't yeah. they look fantastic? Yeah. Go on, Ricky. <laughs> Get up. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. He's a trick man. Well, let's get inside. <laughs> oh, get in there. Oh, I didn't think you were going to make it. Ricky and David went all out, spending their full four hundred pounds on six, yes, six auction lots. While Tim and James were a little more conservative, spending two hundred and sixty-five pounds on five auction lots. Jim Railton is the man in charge today. What does he make of our purchases? The Chinese hanging is very distressed, alas. Um, if it wasn't so distressed, it would almost be a museum piece. But it's a good thing, and um, hanging on someone's wall, it's a bit of history. Mahogany chair is a period chair, lovely, dense, heavy mahogany. Proper period piece, it's real antique, so that should make £100. Oh, yeah. As well as buyers in the room, today's auction is also online. Time to take your seats, gents. Very exciting. Are you excited? Yeah, very, yeah, yeah. First up, we have Ricky's Benares Bell and the Japanese incense burner. Uh, start me at £30 anywhere. Come on. £10 anywhere. He's doing a delivery. £10 a bit. 12. Oh, well done. 14, 16, 18. You're at 20. OK, keep going. Do you want to go 22, 24, 24, 26, 28? Go on. Do you want to go 30, sir? Go on. £30. 35. 35, here we go. 40. Here we go. 45. <sighs> close the lid on your computer. <laughs> You're already <laughs> yeah. your 40 pounds, I'm going to close it. 40 pounds. Yeah. Not bad. That's a 15 pound profit. Six. That's all right, isn't it, Ricky? Yeah. Good start. Good start. Tim's didgeridoo is next. I'll have to start the bidding at 26 pounds. Oh, 26. 28, anywhere in the room. <laughs> That's right. 26, 28, 30. No. 32 in the room. 32. We knew. 34, we just anyone? Knew. Gentleman with a cap on at 32, going at 32. Okay. Strong profit there. Both off to good starts. I'll say this, I never doubted it. Lot number 510 is... <laughs> Hopefully, for Ricky, there's someone in the room that likes shell-decorated boxes, shaped like ducks. Got three commission bids. We'll have to start the bidding at £25. Oh. 25, 28 anywhere. Go on. Yeah, 28, 30. 32. Go on. 32. Yeah, nothing on the internet. Come on, then. 32, all down at 32. No one. Ah. There you go, first loss. I told you it was quackers. The only thing that's making me feel all right is knowing you've got that chair. <laughs> that's what's getting me through this. Excuse me, listen. If you're going to make a noise, you can go out. If you're going to talk, out. OK, I take the hint then. Leave the room, chaps. Up next are those magnification goggles. And I can start £12. 14 anywhere, 14 in the back of the room, 16. <coughs> 18. <coughs> 16, the bids of me, 18, new bidder. 20 on the internet, 22, 24. At 22, I'm going to sell at 22. Not a great performance. And the chaps have relocated to an area just off the sale room. I used no. to get this at school all the time. <laughs> Next up, Ricky's cast of a gorilla skull. I've got one commission bid and I can start at 18 Stay there. Pounds, selling at 18. 20 anywhere. Selling at 18 pounds. Well done, going at 18. <laughs> 18 quid's good if you bought it for 10. I'm pretty sure that they were selling the teeth individually. Let's see how the rest go. <laughs> it's Tim's coronation coach and box up next. Two commission bids, I can start at £25. 28, 30, 32, 34, new bidder. 38, 40. Oh, do man. 42. Well, you want to go 44? Yes, 44. 46? Oh, 48? Oh, no? Told you. 46 then. I said I liked it. I said I liked it. sell 46, all done. Yeah, we made a loss. <laughs> but, but. Well, there's no but, we made a loss. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry back, Tim. It's Ricky's pair of early 20th century pewter candlesticks. I've got one small commission, but I can start at 10 pounds. 10, 12 anywhere? 10. Selling at £10. Oh, no, no, no. Anywhere, 12, Come on, 14. score. Come on, team. Good bidding, sir. 16. 16 wait, pounds. Wait, 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 wait. £16 anywhere. 16 pounds. 16. 16 pounds. We're going to sell. 16. A profit. Excellent work. 16. 16. We're making money. You're making money. Right. 
Time for Tim's lemon press. Bits against the room at £30. 30. £30. You don't want to go £35 anyway. I'm going to go and check on that, is that? thing to have on your sideboard. £30 and I'm selling at 30 Internet, Internet. All done, £30. Hmm. That's a £10 loss. We squeezed what we could out of it. <laughs> <laughs> now, will Ricky's water fountain spout a profit? And I can I'm going in. I've got five commission bids. So £40 I'm going to sell. Who wants to go 45 £40 I'm going to sell at 40 just shy of a bull's eye, Ricky, a great profit. That's good, you made £15. Yeah, 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 but I was expecting I was oh. expecting a long. It's Tim's last lot of the day, the George II side chair. Nice chair. Lovely mahogany chair, this. And I've got a small commission bid, like, start at £25. £28. £28. Selling at £25. £28, you went, jumped up to 40 then on the internet. Two people bidding on the internet. Not nobody in the room. What's happening? What it's a disaster. Why? All done. Everybody finished. At Forty pounds. Ouch! That's the biggest loss so far. You might as well run the credits. <laughs> <laughs> Just one more lot, Tim. It's Ricky's Chinese silk drape. There's this rather special banner hanging here. A Chinese banner. Yeah. And again, a lot of interest in this. Lots of interest. I'll have to start the bidding at 120. The bidding gets to the starting wow. at 120. What are you buying? 120. Who wants to go 130? 120, yeah. then I'm going to sell the 120. No, no get in there. 140. Wait. 150, 160, 170. I'm out at 160. Come on. We're all done at 170. All done. Ah, another loss. I think this could be really, really close. Yeah. Who's good at adding up? He's good at adding up. I'm good at adding up. So that right. makes three of us. <laughs> 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 Shh. Shh. Cup of tea. Cup of tea. Cup of tea. Cup of tea. Come on. Cup of tea. Tim and James started out with £400, and after auction costs, they made a loss of £125.60. So they end up with a total of £274.40. Ricky and David also started out with £400, and after auction costs, they made a slightly smaller loss of £124.48p, meaning that they finished with £275.52, making them our winners by only £1.12. and pence. Yeah! How did it happen? The you like that at all. Yeah. <laughs> All right, take this and do it. Unlucky. A manly handshake. <laughs> Only a pound in it. Do you know what? It's the first time in my life I've gained a pound and I feel happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> Come, Tim, let's go, mate. Oh, oh, God, great God. to see you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Loving Love you, to see you. <laughs> Timothy, take me to the East End. <laughs> hey! <laughs> I'm going to give you five hours of stick, mate, all the way on. <laughs> Off they go, then. I think it's only fair we let those two have the last laugh. Driving along in the middle of nowhere, this little motor. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>